Here we are again, continuing our series on how to mix live music. We've almost completed our mix, applying EQ, compression, and noise gates to the inputs, and using pan, faders, and groups to adjust the blend of all the instruments and voices. Now, we're going to apply some compression to the outputs. There could be two reasons for doing this. Either to limit the maximum output level to protect hearing or equipment, or to make a smoother overall mix with a more polished sound. Both the MGP32X and the TF series of mixers have a compressor available on the Stereo Master bus. The TF series additionally has compressors on all auxiliary outputs. Let's take a look at using a compressor for protection first. It's particularly useful when the musicians are using in-ear monitors to keep a limit on the sound level they will hear and to protect them from unexpected loud noises. If a guitar suddenly gets unplugged or a mic stand falls over and goes bump. You can do this by applying a compressor with a very high ratio such as 20 to 1 or infinity to one. But keep the threshold above the normal output level of the music so it doesn't squash the sound while the musicians play normally. The attack time should be at a minimum and the release time around 300 milliseconds or so. This will make sure any sudden sounds are dealt with but the sound level gets back to normal quickly after the emergency is over. Keep out gain at zero to avoid the chance of overloading the outputs. This severe type of compression we call a limiter because it limits the maximum allowed volume level. You could also apply this to the stereo master to protect the loudspeakers and the audience is hearing. But again, be careful with the threshold setting. Make yourself familiar with that sound of severe compression. When the threshold is too low or the music mix is too loud, so the music is getting squashed. Then you should either increase the threshold or reduce the level of all the input or group faders to bring the mix level below the compressor's threshold. Compare the sound of these two clips, where the second one has a limiter applied with the threshold set too low. I'm gonna love you forever. I'd be a fool if I didn't try. Whenever I see you coming now, I feel like I'm gonna love you forever. I'd be a fool. Now let's consider the other use for output compression. Gently polishing a mix. This can help to smooth the overall sound. Make it a little more like the sound of a CD or finished studio recording. But again, be careful not to overdo it and squash the life out of the live mix. Keep it sounding live and energetic. For this, we're going to use a much more subtle ratio, less than 2 to 1, and we'll have a soft knee. Keep the attack time similar to that used for drums and bass guitar, around 25 milliseconds. Otherwise, the transient start of the beats will be squashed and it can affect the feel of the groove. Keep the release time short enough for the compression to be released before the next beat is played. For example, if the tempo is 120 beats per minute, that means there are two beats per second. So there's a 500 millisecond gap between each main beat. I suggest you keep the release time below 300 milliseconds, but above 100 milliseconds for safety and smoothness. Set the threshold so the compressor 
only activates during the loud passages of music, but not the quiet moments. Keep it subtle. If you're not sure it's doing much, then it's probably set just right. One problem with using a compressor on the Stereo Master is that one particular dominant instrument or frequency can cause compression for the whole mix. For example, if the cymbals get extra loud, they can activate the compressor and cause also the mid and low frequencies to be reduced in level. A solution is to use a multi-band compressor, which have recently become more popular. TF series has such a compressor available on its stereo aux outputs, while the MGP32X has it as an option on its stereo master. What does a multi-band compressor do? It divides a signal into three or more frequency ranges and applies compression to each range separately. So in the case of the loud cymbals, it will compress the higher frequencies without affecting the mid and the low frequencies, so the bass energy will be preserved. However, because there are now three bands of compression, it means there are three times the number of parameters to tweak, making it quite a complicated tool to master. But at least, the default settings on the MGP and the TF mixers are a very good starting point. All you need to do is adjust the threshold level for each band. The TF preset library includes a setting called MBC Easy. Let's take a look at it. As well as independent threshold and gain parameter for each band, there are two crossover frequencies to determine the frequencies affected by each band. Notice the low band is below 132 Hz, so it will catch kick drum and bass guitar sounds. And the high band is over 6 kHz, so it will catch cymbals and high harmonics. In parameter pages 4, 5 and 6, we can see the ratio, attack and release for each band. Notice how the attack and release times are longer for the low frequencies and shorter for the high band. Once again, be careful not to overdo the compression. If you can hear it obviously working, it's probably too much. Listen to the two clips. The first one has mild compression using the multiband comp on the MGP32X. You might not realize it was active. It just catches the loudest parts. The second clip has the threshold for the three bands turned down a further 6 dB. Notice the strangled feel to the sound. It ruins the groove of the music. So the conclusion is that a little compression can be good, enhancing the feel of the music. A lot of compression can ruin a performance. So take care and keep it subtle. Next time, we're going to add some effects to our mix. The icing on the cake, if you like. We'll take a look at reverb and then tap delay. Join me then.